Hello to all my story lovers. Welcome back in Story Time channel. Today our story name is Books for at least one library, written by Sudha Murthy. Before go to the story, please subscribe my channel and press the bell icon. Now let's go to the story. I came from a middle class teacher's family in my family as with many other families of teachers books and knowledge were considered to be the more important than money in our village i still remember the way people respected my grandfather he was certainly not the richest man he used to sit in front of our house on a mat below a shady banyan tree he always held a book in his hand in the evening people would come to him for his advice even the richest man when passing by would greet him respectfully i asked him once why should the teacher be respected he smiled and told me a story it seems some friends of arjuna the mighty warrior in the mahabharata asked him why he gave so much of respect to his teacher dronacharya drona was old not as rich as arjuna and had never ruled any kingdom but arjuna would always sit at his feet respectfully when asked why it seems arjuna replied in this life everything perishes over a period of time whether it be diamond beauty gold or even land only one thing withstands this destruction it is a knowledge the more you give the more you get a teacher gives knowledge to students and i consider him the richest person that's the reason a teacher is respected not for his riches but because he is the source of knowledge as a child the first expedition i ever made outside my home was to the village library building with my grandfather the library was situated in the small two story structure there was a shop on the ground floor on the first floor was the library a big banyan tree stood next to the building there was a cement platform under it in kannada we call it katte in the evening all the elders of the village would sit here my grandfather was one of them i would accompany him and he would go and sit on the platform after dropping me at the first floor it was the first of the many libraries i was to enter there were cupboards with a glass pen so that one could read the titles of the books easily newspapers and the weeklies were piled up neatly tables and chairs were laid for the people to sit and read there was absolute silence i started reading children's book there and used to absorb in them until my grandfather would call me to go home years passed and i became a girl of 12 years By that time I had finished reading almost all the books in the little library village. At times I used to feel boring going to the library as there were not many new books. But still I accompanied my old grandfather to the banyan tree. One such evening we were coming back after our outing. I was feeling particularly bored with the library that day. It was dark and the street lights were blinking. My grandfather could not see too well, so I was leading him by his hand. Suddenly he asked me, "I will recite half a poem. You will complete it. This is a well-known poem." I said I would try. We often played this game and I had learned many poems like this. He said, "If I have wings, I immediately answered without blinking my eyes I will go to the neighboring village library and read many more books My grandfather stopped in surprise he said will you repeat it I repeated I will go to the neighboring village library and read many more books He laughed and said what an unusual way to complete the poem Do you know what is the original poem is Yes I know If I have wings I will fly in the vast blue sky I will see beautiful places I will meet great people I will search for hidden treasures My grandfather kept quiet When we reached home he sat down on the mat and called me 
he was tired but look very happy he looked my little hand into his hand and said do you know there was a great man called andrew carnegie in usa he was a billionaire who lived a century back he will all his wealth not to his children but to build library buildings in as many villages as possible i have not seen america but it seems any library you see in any village was invariably built using andrew carnegie's money i do not know how long i will live but today i realize how much you love books from the way you completed the poem promise me when you grow up if you have more money than you need you will buy books for at least one library it was a cold winter night i still remember the warmth of his large hand in mine he was old and his hands had become hard and wrinkled writing thousands of lines on the blackboard with a chalk every day we were not rich like carnegie but certainly my grandfather had riches of experience and knowledge later in my life i became well off i remember my promise of buying books for a library today through infosys foundation we have given books to 10000 such libraries now this is the end of the story do you like it then comment it subscribe my channel bye bye